Well, congratulations. Thank you. I saw the film and I, I really liked it. Cool. It was Thank interesting. Um, so I just, first question, I guess, is how did you kind of come up with this idea to make this movie? Well, I, uh, it was initially an idea that evolved very organically. I uh, had a friend, a casting director named Joanna Colbert, who I was having coffee with. As late, it was late 2006. And she said, hey, I know a way we can work together. And I said, how? She said, do you know who Marion Doherty is? And I said, I have no idea who that is. And I felt embarrassed. And she said, she's a legendary casting director, and nobody's really told her story. And at the very least, it would be wonderful to get her on tape, just to do an interview with her. Would you, you know, be OK with that? I said, well, let me go back to New York, and I'll, I'll look into who this woman is. And I went back and found only one article, I think, from the University of Oklahoma that was an interview with Marion. And uh, I was amazed at the stories and the people she had helped to nurture, people she had discovered. And it made me realize that casting was an issue, and nobody had told the story of casting before. And I kind of didn't understand how that could be, how I could have grown up my entire life loving movies and never once thinking about the casting director and what they do. Right. Yeah, I know. It's, it's funny because, like, I was just saying, I was um, talking to my friend about it after I saw the film, and it was like, you always think of the director and like the actors, but that kind of goes unnoticed. The casting director, and that's such a big, I mean, that's how you get a movie made, pretty much. Well, Glenn Close said a great line that I cut out, is that, you know, first there's words on a page, and then there's a cast. And if you have amazing words on a page, and you have an amazing cast, the director can only mess it up. Right, yeah, exactly. So you called Marion? And you kind of pitched the idea. Well, her. it wasn't. It was Joanna and Kate Lacey, as it turned out, were the two that had come together to kind of became their brainchild initially. And uh, so I knew Joanna, but Kate was actually Marion Doherty's last assistant. And at that point, she was an executive at Disney, in casting. Okay. So they were they were actually casting Step Up together, and they had found Channing Tatum. Oh wow! To step Up at about that time, and uh, so so we got in touch with Marion, and through Marion, we met Margaret Witten, our other EP, who was taking care of Marion. And they really helped along the way as well. Yeah. Was she excited when you kind of proposed? Yeah, she loved. She mar I mean, Marion loved the idea of the film. And I told her we'd be dealing with the Oscar issue, and she said, "That's great. Do what you need to do." Yeah. I think. Well, I think it's great that you did that because it kind of shows. I I think it's so important that they get recognition. They still deserve it. Yeah, definitely. So you when did you shoot the film? Late two thousand. We started. But we had in two thousand eight. We got Julia Taylor and Glenn Close. Glenn Close. You know, we went to some A-listers initially, and, and they were like, well, let me see who you get. Mm -hmm. you know, and then uh, Glenn Close, Close was like, I'll do it. She didn't care. And then in 2000, then we got the money, uh, we got some financing, and in 2010, we did about 240 interviews. So really, the film was made between 2010 and then our premiere in Toronto, so like August 2012, that was the period of making the movie. Right. Wow. So how long did it take you to get all of those, I would say cast members, but all of those people, yeah. you know, in your... To put together the ensemble. Right. It is like one of the greatest ensembles ever put yeah. in a film, right? Yeah, it's great. IMDb, you see the credits of, oh my god. I know, I, I, I was so proud of everyone we added. Yeah. <laughs> and certain ones aren't actually on IMDb, you know. I think Woody Allen, Mel Gibson, just because we're not supposed to market right. their names. Right. But uh, Clint Eastwood said yes two and a half years later, we got him on camera. Beth Middler said yes right away. Three and a half years later, their schedules are just crazy. Yeah. You know, Beth got this one woman show in Las Vegas for a year, a year and a half, and you know, we, we didn't have the money to go out to Vegas just to get that middle, so we had to wait for her to come back to New York. And so that that's what it was like, it was a waiting game. And we would build relationships with the assistants, and then those assistants would change and be replaced by new assistants who we had to build relationships with. But it, it, Kate Lacey is a genius who just will not give up. She's so determined to get people in this movie to pay tribute to Mary and then to Lynn. And, and Jeff Bridges called me, you know, so it started, the word started getting out there and and they all, you know, loved Marion and loved Lynn Stolmaster and they wanted to pay tribute. Yeah, that's amazing. So did you, you went to them, to each person, was it kind of like, I don't know, inspiring, I guess, to see these people talk so highly about Amazing. Marianne? I mean, I, I talked to 240 people who are at the top of their field, you know, 100 casting directors and then actors and producers, it was an amazing experience. I can't imagine how much I've learned from doing it. Right. And so you, you've done a documentary before this, yeah. correct? Okay, so are you planning to do more documentaries, or are you doing want to go down like a... Oh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. I'm doing both. But uh, yeah, the documentary I'm working on now is called Thank You for Your Service, and it's about uh, it's about America and its uh, 
a tumultuous relationship with his military veterans. And I'm also uh, doing a psychological thriller called Beard's Creek that we are starting to cast and uh, hopefully we'll be shooting in the spring. Okay, cool. And so do you have any, uh, having done this movie, Casting By, when you're casting your next film and every other film, you know, you're on out, do you think of it any differently? Like pay attention to maybe the casting process a little more? Well, we haven't really started the casting. We're at the point where we're making offers to the top level talent. But there's a lot of, there's I think over 30 roles in the film. So I am going to think about it very differently. I feel like, I mean, we'll see how it goes, but I feel very educated now in the casting process. Right. Not, I might be the most educated person who's not a, a, a film director and or a casting director when it comes to casting. Right. Okay. And it premiered at the Toronto Film Festival right. last year. And how was it received over there? Oh, really well. I mean, and then we actually came to New York, the New York Film Festival a month later. So it was an amazing run, and we've been to over 40 festivals around the world, and now we're excited to be at the Los Angeles Film Festival. This is actually one of our most exciting premieres, because this is ground zero uh, for casting directors and of the, the Oscar issue. Yeah. So we, we had a screening on Saturday, and John Lithgow came and did the panel with us. Deb, Deborah Zane was on the panel, mm -hmm. and Richard Hicks, who was the president of the CSA, moderated. And uh, it was just an incredible, incredible premiere. Yeah, that's amazing. And so you finished the film in like around 2011, I think? Was it around? No, 2012, right? 2012. I mean, literally, when, the, the thing about filmmaking when you're doing it for festivals is you get into a major festival, mm -hmm. you have to finish the movie. Right. If you don't get into a major festival, yes. you keep making the movie. But, and that's the hard part is, oh my god, now we have six weeks and the music's not done and the film's not mixed and there's not enough money to color correct and okay. it'll it be explosion. Right. And, well, Marion, she passed away a couple years ago. Did she ever get the chance to see the film before it... She started? didn't, unfortunately. But when Marion passed away, which was unexpected, we had about a two-and-a-half-hour cut. Oh, wow. So uh, it wasn't something I was ready to show her, you know. Right. So had she hadn't seen kind of... She saw, you know, we would interview Clint Eastwood, and we would, or Robert Redford, and we would put the interview in front of her. And, mm -hmm. and uh, she, well, Marion, I, I don't know if you know this, but she had dementia soon after I interviewed her. Oh, I so I interviewed her in 07 and wasn't really able to go back to her because she started having memory loss. So by the time we showed her these people, she would recognize Clint Eastwood. You know, she was told, oh, Warren Beatty's going to call you. And she's like, Warren Beatty's going to call me. So she, at that moment, remembered who those people were. Right. But I showed her the interview. It was very sad. I showed her the interview with John Boyd. And at the end, she said, oh, my God, he's so emotional. He's so in love with her. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, my God, what a nice man. What's his name? 